Okay, I have four pages to discuss. So, I didn't tell you what I bought in place of the Highlander yet. Is that a hint? No, it's not a Jeep. Let's go see. It's not the Leaf, but yes, it is the Rivian. And yes, the door handles do squeak when they come out right now. Um, this thing is incredible. Okay, so here's my reasoning behind getting an R1S. All EV situations and, and benefits, etc. aside, um, comparing it as just a vehicle to another vehicle, regardless of propulsion type, it is this is just the dual dual bat or dual motor standard battery, which is an LFP battery, um, 259 miles of range, which is more than enough for us. I, I doubt a Bronco Raptor is going to go 259 miles on the tank either. Um, it's faster than a Bronco Raptor, more ground clearance, identical um, breakover angle almost, um, and it's $15,000 cheaper. So I could buy an R1S dual motor uh, standard battery, and then I could go buy another Leaf for the difference, for the same uh, price as and our or as a Bronco Raptor is. So uh that's I mean on road they're not even comparable. A Bronco Raptor versus an R1S um they they really don't compare. But you know, I could see people actually cross shopping those. Um you could get a more expensive R1S, but the funny thing is your interior is pretty much exactly the same. This is basically the same interior regardless of what R1S you have. So all three rows are heated seats. The front row only is cooled. Um, it's, it's a great interior. The only options really, you can upgrade the sound system. You can get a uh, like an automatic frosting kind of panoramic roof, uh, which I think is a bit of a gimmick and an expensive one but you could get it um, and you can get the camp speaker instead of a drawer which I actually wouldn't want uh, a few other things like that um, but base it's the same seats uh, you can get different colors basically so when you're paying extra for an R1S you're paying for the crazy capabilities and batteries that they have. So the quad motor and the big battery pack and 410 miles of range or whatever, um, that's all great and they're really cool. Um, but it, it doesn't add value for my family. So that's not what we, what we spent our money on. Um, the Bronco Raptor is also really cool, but again, not a value to my family. Um, so the fact that this is faster than it, it's, it could go toe to toe, in my opinion, in many off-road scenarios, probably not the high speed whoop stuff, but um, rock crawling, driving through sand, etc. This is gonna do just as well as a Bronco Raptor. Um, and on the same token, it gets 75 miles per gallon equivalent. This does. 75 miles, <laughs> you're getting what, 15 in a Bronco? Um, it's got seating for seven. Cargo capacity is amazing. It, uh, it has more cargo capacity than a standard size expedition. Then uh, I, I, that's, that's amazing. Uh, the Expedition Max has more and a Suburban has more. Um, and again, I think it's more accessible, the cargo capacity is. Um, people say, oh, EVs are so expensive, blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. They're not. Um, so you can get an R1S like this. They start like mid seventies, I think 76,000 or something like that. Um, after taxes and fees and things, you're gonna be a right around 80, 82,000, um, which is what we paid for this. Um, I looked at expeditions because I had such a good experience with my own many years ago 
um, there, you're going to pay more money for a suburban Tahoe expedition, you know, Sequoia than you are an R1S. And the R1S is going to do many more things much better than any of those. On top of that, if you've got a payment on a vehicle that expensive, and then you're going to pay for fuel, you're basically paying two payments for fuel, you know, your, your payment, all of it, it's not going to be cheap. So while I wouldn't describe this as a cheap vehicle, I would describe it as a good value uh, a, a, to my family in my situation. I'm not paying crazy California gas prices. Um, and I have just as much cargo capacity and it's easier to park at the busy beaches um, or drive downtown than a suburban or an expedition. Um, so, and if you get an expedition limited four by four, which is not, you know, limited. Oh, that's a nice one, right? No, limited is like kind of lower on the totem pole these days because they've got platinum, king ranch, all all the rest of it. Um, so the limited is is really kind of the first level of trim where you get cooled seats and that kind of stuff, which again, this has. So comparing as close as possible an R1S to an Expedition would come across as a limited 4x4, that's well into the 80s. That's very expensive. Um, so when you're keeping the options down, um, which is again, a smaller the smaller motors and the smaller battery pack on an R1S, you get a really incredible vehicle for the price. Um, things I like about the R1S, cargo capacity, I already said that. The seats are really comfortable. Everything's a little bit firm, but the Expedition uh, currently, I like the Tahoe seats. The Expedition has really hard seats. They are rock solid and there's no sculpting or like, uh, you know, curves in them. So when you're driving a thing, you're like hanging on as you're going around corners. Um, and you just don't feel comfortable nestled in like this. Um, lane change assist and all that kind of stuff works well on this. I did have to go into the settings and turn lane change assist on um, before it started working. It's still not as good as Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise is really good, and I've heard, I have no experience with it personally, but I've heard Super Cruise is even better. Um, that's kind of the gold standard at the moment. Um, I don't think Tesla's full self-driving is that impressive. Um, kind of on par with Blue Cruise. I think Blue Cruise is actually a little bit better. It can change lanes by itself and that kind of stuff. Um, so I have had a few phantom braking incidents prior to the last update that I had. I would put the uh, highway assist on and then it seemed whenever I was going around corners it seemed to be kind of uncertain. So you'd get like a lot of phantom braking like, oh, it thinks something's there. Never mind. It's going to accelerate again. It, the last update seems to have fixed that. Yeah, the interior seems super durable. I've got my notes here. Um, I, I, the whatever material they're using um, as their fake leather seems really like it's going to hold up well. Most of the um, reviews that I've seen of people, you know, buying used ones or detailing them years down the road, they do really well. Um, hopefully, that's something that remains true. The carpet, I it, the carpet in my Highlander on the back of the seats was the same as my Explorer, which was the same as like a 1990 Ford Explorer. It was this really long stranded fluffy stuff, which is absolute garbage. If you've ever put a Christmas tree in a car, <laughs> um, you will never ever get all the pine needles out for the rest of that car's life. But it's especially in that I'd spend forever trying to clean out the pine needles and stuff from that carpet. Even if I wrapped it in a blanket, somehow there would be pine needles in the, you know, in the, in that fluff on the back of those seats. So the, the back, the carpet on the back of these seats is short. Um, it's like proper carpet. Um, and it, everything vacuums up really easily. We have a boxer and I put her in the back. Um, 
and again that long fluffy stuff on the back of my highlander seats would just grab those short box of hairs and hang on to them it was forever it drove me nuts trying to vacuum those off this with the short fiber um, carpet you just run the vacuum right over it it's all gone everything's gone it's so easy to clean um we've had the dogs inside moved furniture i've towed a trailer done beach trips um trips to home depot to get wood and all that kind of stuff everything just cleans up really easily i i really enjoy it um i do keep sandy stuff in the front um so if we're going to the beach i keep the kids sand toys like beach toys in the front so that when all the sand comes off um, as much of it as possible goes in there but the boogie boards two of the boogie boards fit in there and that's fine but the two bigger boogie boards that we have have to go in the back so inevitably there's some sand but again it just vacuums right up which is awesome um i love the bench row thank you so much rivian for giving us a bench row and not captain seats i need that for my family i wouldn't be able to buy an r1s and make it work for my family without that so thank you rivian um a lot of people complain about the sliding phone uh, charger like that uh i'll take you off here a lot of people complain about the phone charger they put this bump in on the gen 2s um and this material is a little bit grippy but if you have like a a phone not in a case with that um glass back like an iphone like this or whatever it does slide around a ton and then disconnect from the charger and it's not charging um i think that's such an overrated gripe because i on this phone this one i just got a silicone case for like 10 bucks or something and it grips right there and i can kind of corner or accelerate a break or whatever and it's not going anywhere it grips just fine so i think that's kind of overrated i do love this space for our phones um if we're not using the charger we can just stick them in there and they sit right up that's awesome um the maps and navigation work fine um i do use a better route planner if i'm you know on the app if i'm looking for chargers on a trip but it does it shows you you know where uh the chargers are and and all out of that so and it says 10 out of 10 chargers available i think that's pretty standard um it does have now um apple music um native built in which is great that's a big improvement and also audible um i like having that it's taking a second right now because it doesn't like my wi-fi it's only got one bar um so I think that's all great. I really love these features. My wife hates this screen, um, so she doesn't let me have it on if we're driving somewhere together. She'll put it on music or navigation. Um, but the um, knowing the motor temperatures, the battery temperature, um, it kind of it tells you how high, what's the highest point the car has ever been to, um, what your current elevation is. You've got all your suspension settings and off-road settings and all of that. That's great. Um, this is really fantastic. I will say, kneel height is amazing. So that's automatic. So if I put it in drive, um, I can put the it. Once I'm moving over six miles an hour, it will automatically raise the, the suspension to standard height again. Um, and this flashes where it says standard, that flashes um, when the suspension's going up and down. Um, I also like having this. Our Maki -E has this as well, like a, a display up front that you can actually see, unlike Tesla's. Um, when you're driving and there's a car next to you, it'll put them kind of either side where the car is roughly or a car behind you or any of the rest of it. And then if my wife has the music app going and she's fiddling with that, I love this. It I can still see where I'm going. It gives me, you know, what my next turn is and all the rest of that up, up here. So all of my driver stuff is up here and they can mess with that and do whatever. Um, I love the built-in um, dash cam from four cameras around. I'm not sure if it does a camera on the inside or not. Um, the buttons 
seem blank and kind of confusing at first, but this is music, volume, etc. Um, this is driving control, so um, uh, highway assist, and you can turn your speed up or down and that kind of thing. Um, and then, like right now, if I press this button, you can see if it focuses. Focus. There we go. You can see that it's going to open my gate. It says garage, but I don't have a garage. I have a carport and I have a gate. So um, that would open the gate. I like that that pops up. Um, it's geolocated, so it knows where it is and it will pop up as I'm coming up the driveway at home or if I put it in drive and I'm about to leave. Um, this is cavernous. I've got wipes and my sunglasses and a uh, rag to wipe the windows and the hard drive for the um, expanded drive cam and all the rest of that in there. But it's huge. My wife gets her massive water bottle in there and we still close it. This space is fantastic. This is where um, Starbucks goes or coffee drinks. If I've got the, you know, uh, tray, the carry tray for you just sit it right in there. This is plenty grippy enough. Um, and with these lips on here, nothing slides around. Um, to go food orders go here. And again, it's not slipping around. And if something were to spill, you know, this is nice and easy to clean. I'm not sure if it removes or comes out. I think it does. Oh, look at that. It does. So I can take that out um, and wipe that down instead of having a mess all over here. Although these are the short hair or short fiber carpets as well, the mats. I like them. They're easy to clean. It's just dirty right now. Sorry. Um, but yeah, food and everything else goes here. That's awesome. Um, and my hat, gotta have a spot for my hat. Um, have my sunshades where I always put them in every car I've had. No um, glove box. I thought that would be an issue, but it's not. We've got these um, kind of at both points. Um, and the door pockets are really huge. They're actually so huge. Um, I keep the towels in my side. My wife won't use the one on that side because it's so deep. Then she, she's pregnant right now. She has a hard time reaching all the way to the bottom of it. Um, so, I mean, this is our standard car. It's, it's set up exactly as uh, we use it daily. Big picture. It's arguably good for good value for money. Um, that sounds insane when you're talking about an $80,000 car. My Expedition, 2001 Expedition, brand new back in the day, was $30,000. That was, you know, the same amount of money comparably to $80,000 today. That was a lot of money for somebody to pay back in 2001. Um, this is a lot of money for somebody to pay today. Um, but you're getting what you pay for, in my opinion, in both of those instances. Um, this thing has space for days. Um, it's I can get it dirty. It cleans up easy. Everyone can get in it. I can put the dogs in it. Um, it goes to the beach. Long and the short of it, the Kia AV9 is great, um, but it doesn't even compare cargo capacity-wise. This has night and day more uh, cargo capacity than an EV9. This can tow, an EV9 can't. Um, I'm not knocking EV9s. I think they seem like a great SUV and good value as well for families that don't need a third row um, or don't intend to do trips long enough that they need the third row and cargo capacity. Um, so I, I, this thing's amazing. It's good off-road. It has the tires that I, I don't need chains in the mountains in the wintertime. Uh, I can drive it on the beach. I can tow with it. Um, I've done all of that and it's awesome. I just, I, I think it's amazing. Um, it's, it's a bit crazy to say an $80,000 SUV is good value. Um, but it is, uh, if you were shopping new vehicles, which plenty of people do, if you're shopping new vehicles and you're looking at Tahoe's, Expeditions, Sequoia's, um, even, um, the, uh, Toyota minivan, the Toyota Sienna, um, 
any of that or or an ev9 or an id buzz this is has comparable cargo space to the very biggest of those um it's got less only than like the suburban and the expedition max standard expeditions and tahoes this has the same amount um you're also going to be paying as much for those as you are um for this so when people say evs are too expensive that's really not true in all cases i, I mean sure lucid or uh, tesla plaid or you know um something like that sure but if you're looking for something with cargo space that can tow go off road there's nothing there's uh, this is better than all of those vehicles um at, at everything it is incredible it really is a good value for families so it is fast this is just the dual motor so this is the slowest one with the smallest range possible um, and I did that because that's all I can afford. Um, but it's also, in my opinion, all most people need. Um, it's more than most people need. If there was a slower version, that would be fine. It would be more than enough. This thing is a rocket and it's only, you know, 533 horsepower or something and 600 and something pound feet of torque. That's still a huge amount. And because it is all available right now, immediately off the line. It is much faster than a comparable gas powered SUV of this size with the same sort of horsepower and torque. Uh, it's just how it's gonna be. Um, this thing's a rocket off the line and that's the least exciting thing EVs do. Uh, and that's fun once in a while but my absolute favorite thing about EVs is how silky smooth they are, especially this one all the way to a stop. Um, but there's no gear changes. There's nothing going on that the computer has to think about before it happens. Um, there's no hydraulic components that are gonna take a while and change how they shift based on temperature or load or any of that. This is just, it is what it is all the time. It's great for um, driving through the McDonald's line, driving through the school pickup line, driving it to the beach, driving downtown, cruising on the freeway, tight, twisty roads. That, I haven't even touched on that. The hydraulically controlled, you know, suspension in this, it doesn't have sway bars. So it has hydraulically controlled suspension. I, I forget exactly what they call it. I, hydraulic roll control, something like that. Um, but that is amazing. The two things that absolutely blew me away when I went for a test drive, um, the demo drive on with an R1S was one, the cargo space. Before I even drove it, I was sold. The frunk is huge and I'll show you in a minute. It's massive. It's it is amazing. I've seen it on video so many times, but I didn't comprehend how huge it is. Um, so there's that. Um, then the suspension blew me away. It is. It just stays flat around all corners. You don't, because the battery is so low and you've got the hydraulically controlled um, suspension, when you corner, it just hangs. It just, that's it. Um, you can push it all the way till the tires cannot grip anymore. It will still be steering and turning, but you're going to start sliding as well when you push it that hard, um, which of course I've never done, and especially not on public roads. Okay, so this frunk is absolutely huge, um, and people complain that the lift over angle is high, um, that's true. You, it is high. So if that's an issue for you, um, consider that with versus an F-150 Lightning or something. Um, but it's not in, in Neil mode like it is right now. Um, it's pretty low. I, I, I'm not crazy strong or anything and I can lift stuff in just fine. Um, yeah, this is, this is amazing. There's a drain in there at the bottom. I've got the charger at the bottom. Um, you've got your fill over there for windshield washer fluid. Um, but I do like 
if you're okay with the higher liftover angle instead of like a um, F-150 Lightning where the whole grill kind of comes up and away, this is like a bucket as opposed to a box without the front. Um, everything stays put in here even once I open it. Whereas if the grill, there's no grill and you've got this thing packed with stuff and you open it up, it's all going to start falling out. So I don't have that issue, which I really like. The interior is messy, yes. Um, but the kids can control their own climate control, which is great. These I haven't used, um, but these door pockets are good. The button access to get to the back is really great. Um, my kids can do that part, but then they need, um, my two little kids need an adult or a bigger kid to push it back. That does take quite a bit of effort. Um, back here, the kids have got, um, USB-C's in there, cup holders, everything's comfortable. They've got their air vents um, up there and here. On the back side, you pop this off and they all come with a tow hitch, all R1S's. Um, and I really love the split tailgate. So I'll put this aside for a second. You've got the power outlets here and to fold the seats down. Um, and then just tons of room in here. It won't look like it on camera, same as the front, but there's tons of room. Pop these buttons and slide these around to tie stuff down, which I actually do tie uh, my, I strap my stuff down when we're on road trips. Um, I might be OCD on that front, but I do. Um, and then you press it once to unlock it and then just pull it down. Um, and my dog gets up here, no problem. Um, needs to be vacuumed out again. Again, it's dirty, but this is flat. So you can stack stuff in, you know, all the way back um, and use this entire space, which I couldn't do on my Highlander or uh, Explorer. Lastly, I have these tires, which are three peak mountain snow rated. Um, so again, they're the chunkier tires, which I think will give me a softer ride. Some people complain the ride is too stiff on these. Um, I think it's people with the 22 inch tires and whatnot. Um, the ride on this is fantastic. Um, the adaptive suspension is really good. Um, the brakes are phenomenal. It tows amazing. There's just nothing bad about this. Oh, underrated feature, the dynamic lighting. Um, driving at nighttime with the dynamic headlights is a game changer. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Um, I've had it for three months. I'm over the honeymoon period and I just, I adore it. It does everything. It is the Swiss army knife of family vehicles.